Hi, I'm Bill Bond, Senior Director of Creative Operations at iSoc, and I'm thrilled to share with you a 10-step guide to crafting the perfect AI prompt to help you turn your ideas into stunning visuals. Let's get started. The first step in creating a great prompt is protecting your creativity. I'd like to start by highlighting the importance of ensuring that your outputs are commercially safe so you can focus on bringing your vision to life without worry. Generative AI by iStock is trained exclusively on our high quality creative library, generating images that are not only commercially safe, but also legally indemnified. Step two is to start with a clear vision. To build your prompt, to make sure you're starting with something that's clear in your mind. Imagine a scene where you want to create and begin with the basic elements like the noun, the verb, the setting. And let me show you an example of how I'll take those basic steps and begin to build my prompt. And before I start my prompt, let me give you a quick tip. If you're new to prompt writing, a really helpful tool that we have is the Prompt Builder. By clicking on this area, you can see our panel that allows you to quickly input your subject, your action, your surroundings, and the visual aesthetics you want to see, and then hit Build to quickly create a prompt. I'm going to start by not using the Prompt Builder, though, and go right to building my own prompt. And I'm going to start with a woman who is standing on a busy New York City street. And I'll hit Generate. Now, it often takes about six to eight seconds to generate in a series of images. And you'll see that in my prompt, I have a woman who's the subject. She's, where is she doing? She's standing in the, in the urban area, and it's a New York City street. And you'll see that's exactly what I get back in my generation. You see this near, the buildings behind them that feel like New York City, and they are in an urban location, and they are looking at the camera. The third step to making a great prompt is to be detailed and specific. Don't be afraid to add lots of detail. The more specific your prompt, the more precise the output is. Think of it like telling a story where every detail counts and you will get exactly what you want by being very descriptive. Here we are back at the page, and I'm, here's the prompt that we've been working on, a woman who is standing in a busy New York City street. So now I'm going to get more detail in my description of what I want to see. So I'm going to take that same basic idea and add additional detail. Now it's a pink-haired woman who is standing in the busy New York City street. She wears a purple scarf. Let's hit generate. The AI generator works really great with additional detail. And I personally found that things like color, clothing items, accessories will really come through in your generations if you prompt them. And here are the results that we see. The woman has purple, uh, pink hair. She's wearing a purple scarf and she's in New York City. So adding this additional detail helps the AI generator know exactly what you want and helps you build a better prompt. But let's not stop there. Let's go on to the next stop and make this prompt even better. Step four to making a really great prompt is making sure you really describe the environment that you want to see in your generation. Describing the, the environment can completely transform your generation. So let's take the prompt that we've been working on and get into greater detail there. Okay. Here we are back at the generator page. And here's our prompt. Let's add additional detail to the environment to make sure that we tell even more of a story. So now we still have the pink haired woman wearing the purple scarf, but now we have more description. It's nighttime, it's on the city streets, it's recently rained, and there are people out of focus walking in the background. Let's generate and see what we get. When I'm prompting a detail like this, I almost like to put myself in the seat of a person writing like a short story. I find that if I can kind of speak in that tone, the generator offers really great results. And here you'll see that the prompt continues to improve. You see those wet streets, you see the shops behind her, and you see the glowing lights. And we're getting more to more to where we want to be to get to our final results. So let's go to the next step to see if we can continue to improve on this prompt and create greater variations. Step five to writing a right, great prompt is knowing and highlighting your key elements. Whether it's the person, the object, or the focal point, describing them in detail ensures that they stand out in your image. Let's take that, that thought process and apply it to the prompt that we've been working on. So I'm taking our prompt and I'm going to now add additional detail. So not only does she have pink hair and a purple scarf, but she's wearing a jean jacket and her expression is pleasant and toothy and she looks glad that her friend is on the way to meet up. 
Now, one thing I want to call out here is the negative prompt. I don't want her wearing a leather jacket, so I'm going to add that now. And using the negative prompt will help reinforce the generator things that you don't want to see in your prompt. So let's generate and see what we get. One of the things I found is important is that when you call out these small details, really get descriptive on what you want to see. It's not just a jacket, it's a jean jacket. What is her smile? It's not just a regular smile, but it's a toothy smile. And you'll see from these results that the more detailed and descriptive you get, you'll get exactly what you want. And there we also have, she's not wearing a leather jacket. So you know that that negative prompt reinforced what you wanted to see. Step six to improving your prompt is incorporating emotions and mood to really resonate with the viewer. Make sure you're incorporating emotions and mood to refine your image's overall vibe. Use terms that evoke the right feelings and align with your creative vision. Let me show you an easy way to do that to this prompt that we've been working on using the controls on the right-hand side of the interface. Okay, here we are back at our prompt. And I wanna show you an easy way that you can quickly change the emotion and mood using some of the, the controls that we have on the right-hand side of the AI generator. I'm gonna call attention to the color and mood here. And the color and mood will apply sort of film-like color qualities to your generations, which can really help change the way the image looks overall. So I'm gonna select the bold. I really like the way that bold adds color to the picture, to the generations. You'll see here that once you add it, it will be at the top near your prompt and you hit generate. Bold, the bold color and mood filter tends to give greater saturation and greater um, uh, depth to the images that you're generating and gives you a really great colorful uh, standout look. And these types of colors really help drive the color and the mood of the image you're trying to generate. This is a really easy way to get multiple variations of the concept that you're working on. Step seven to writing a great prompt is making sure that you include action or dynamics that tell a story. So include these in your scenes to go beyond simple portraits or simple generations of, of objects. Describe what's happening and bring your image to life, adding depth and realism to what you're creating. We're gonna take our same prompt, but we're gonna add a little more detail. So I really like where this is going with the bold uh, color filter and the long descriptive prompt, but she really needs to be doing something to really connect more with my, my customer or the, the people looking at this generation. So I'm going to add in that she is holding and looking at her mobile phone while texting to her friend. It seems like a simple action, but it's one that will give a greater story to what you're generating and go beyond simple portraits and give you something that customers and your audience can connect with because they see it in their own day-to-day -day life. So here you see uh, we've got everything in our prompt adherence and she's on her phone texting and we're getting exactly what we want. So step eight of writing a great prompt is consider your perspective and angle. Whether it's a close-up or a wide shot, the viewpoint shapes the final composition. Sometimes it can be hard to write this into your prompt, but we have some controls that'll make this super easy for you to create more variations. As we're working on our prompt, there are some easy controls that you can use to really influence the way it looks. One of those that I wanna call out right now are the camera controls. So using the camera controls will allow you to quickly get greater variations to your, to your prompts that you've created. So here I've selected the wide angle lens and I'll hit regenerate. So with the wide angle lens in photography, this tends to make the subject that's in the foreground larger while making the background seem to kind of go off towards into infinity. And you'll see that as you apply this, this wide angle filter, it does exactly that to the prompt. The prompt is still there, the basic details that you've been putting in, including the pink hair and the scarf, but you'll see that the overall look of the image now is very different. It looks like it's been taken on a, on a camera with a wide angle lens. So use these controls on the right to quickly go through different variations and then create, create a wide range of looks for your detailed prompt that you've been working on. And step nine to write a great prompt is to review, refine, and iterate. Don't settle on your first attempt. Explore variations and perfect your prompt until you get exactly the image you want. If you're not finding that you get exactly what you want, use the tools that we have available to you to really get in there and be as creative as you want to be. Let me show you some of those tools now. So here we are back at our prompt, 
and I like where it's going. I like everything that I'm seeing, but let's say I want to change a specific image to look different. I have a lot of options. I have on the right-hand side, the aspect ratio. So I can regenerate any of these images in a different uh, aspect ratio. One to one, which is square, three, four, which is great for portraits, 16 by nine, which is great for web banners. You have a lot of options there. But let's say you want to get in and actually go hands-on and change the image. Let me show you a quick way to do that. So if you mouse over the image, you can quickly go in and mouse over our modify panel and either refine, extend, or remove the background. I'm just going to show you two of them quickly now. First, hit extend. With extend, you can expand the canvas in any way that you want. So I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. I'm gonna go with a medium or a square format. And I just wanna generate a little bit more above her head so that I can get room for additional copy. So I've selected my aspect ratio and I'll now hit generate. So as I generate, you have this ability to create different variations of your initial generation, but thankfully you, your history of everything you've done will always be kept in the tray below in, in your modify panel. So if you don't like, some, see, like something that you've created, you can always step back and try again or approach it from a different way. So you'll see here that we now have gone from our initial image here. Uh, I'll just switch over here, our initial image here. And now I have uh, four different variations. The initial image that give you additional copy space above. So let's say we like one of these images and we want to go with these now, but we want to make one additional change. Let's say we want to refine her so that she is wearing sunglasses. So I'm going to mouse over her eyes like this, and I'm just going to say, go over to the prompt field and say, uh, woman wearing glasses. And I hit generate. And you can do this with really any part of the image. One of my suggestions with Refine Tool is it's actually better to mask a little more than you expect. Don't try to get super precise. It's better to mask a larger area and allow the AI generator to understand what you want and create variations from there. And as you'll see, you get four variations back that show her wearing glasses. So again, depending on what you're looking for, you can get multiple variations and great results. So these are just a few of the ways that you can refine the image and continue to take your prompt from simply texting to hands-on creative change. And step 10 to writing a great prompt is prioritizing authenticity. ISOC visual GPS research shows that 90% of consumers want to know if the content that they're seeing is AI generated. Transparency helps build trust and keep your business credible. Consider labeling the AI content that you use, particularly when you're generating images with people or you're showing real products as part of your creative process. And there you have it, iStock's 10-step guide to transforming your ideas into stunning visuals using generative AI. If you're ready to try it for yourself, visit iStock today and bring your creative vision to life.